In this video tutorial, we're going to be calculating thrust force and turning moments for various different submerged surfaces. The difference between this tutorial and tutorials we've seen previously is that in this tutorial, all of the submerged planes are going to be fully submerged, and that affects our calculations somewhat. So to begin, I'll just explain the diagram. On the left hand side, shown in grey, we have a distance h which is the height of water above our submerged surface. And we have a distance d, which is the depth. Now in this first example, we're going to be using a square submerged plane. Therefore, on the right hand side of that diagram, I've indicated that the width is also equal to the depth. The section on the right hand side of the diagram is what we would see if we were looking at the submerged surface from this angle here. So it's the opposite view of the square surface. You'll notice another couple of variables indicated here. We have y bar, which is the distance to the centroid of our submerged surface, or the horizontal center line. And this is going to be used in various different calculations. We also have h bar, which is the distance to the center of pressure. Now, as we mentioned in the previous tutorial, h bar is always going to be greater than y bar, because the centre of pressure is always below the centroid of the submerged surface. So let's start by calculating y bar. Well, with reference to our values for h and d, we can see that y bar is just going to be h plus half of d. We're referring to this distance here, y bar. Therefore, y bar, I'm just going to write this in the bottom left hand corner, is our height of 6.5 meters plus half of the depth of the gate, 4.5 over two, which gives us 8.75 meters. Now later on, we'll be calculating the value of h bar, so we'll be able to compare our values of y bar and h bar. Now the next thing that we're going to calculate is the thrust force acting on this submerged surface. And the formula that we use for this is rho g a y bar. Essentially what we're doing is we're finding the hydrostatic pressure at the center of the submerged surface and then multiplying it by its area. The hydrostatic pressure would just be rho g y bar at the center of the submerged surface. But let's calculate our force. We have our density 1020, which corresponds to salt water. We have gravity 9.81. We have area. Well, the area of a square is just the length times the width, or in this case, 4.5 times 4.5, 4.5 squared. And y bar, we said was 8.75. This gives us a thrust force acting on the surface equal to 1773.0 kilonewtons. I've already converted from newtons to kilonewtons there. So we know the magnitude of our thrust force. What we don't yet know is where it acts because the thrust force actually acts at the center of pressure. So the thrust force caused by that fluid is horizontal but it acts at the center of pressure like so. So before we can determine any turning effects here, we need to calculate h bar. Now there's quite a complicated calculation for this. h bar is ISS over AY bar. Now the bottom of that fraction is easy to calculate because we know our area and we know our value for Y bar. But the top, ISS, is a little more complicated. Now ISS is something known as the second moment of area, but the SS indicates that that's about our free surface. So SS on our diagram would be for the free surface. Now we're going to calculate ISS first, and then we're going to use the value to determine our value for H bar. Now the formula for ISS, is IgG 
plus a y bar squared. Now once again we can evaluate a y bar squared because we know the area and we know the distance y bar to the centroid of the submerged surface. But what do we mean by IgG? Well IgG is the second moment of area, but this time it's the second moment of area about the centroid. If we were to label this on our diagram, we would have GG as our centroid. Now second moment of area about the centroid is something we've seen before when we looked at beam bending. And the formula for a square for the second moment of area about the centroid is B D cubed over 12. Because we have a square surface here, that would become D D cubed over 12 or just D to the fourth over 12. So our formula for ISS becomes d to the fourth over 12 plus the area, or the area is d times d, or d squared, times y bar squared. So let's input some values. We have 4.5 to the power 4 over 12 plus 4.5 squared times 8.75 squared, giving us a value of ISS equal to 1584.56, and our units there are metres to the fourth. But it isn't really ISS that we wanted to calculate. What we're aiming to calculate is H bar, and we said that H bar was ISS over AY bar. Well, we have our value of ISS now. We have our area, 4.5 squared, and we have Y bar, 8.75, giving us a value of H bar equal to 8.943. So over in the bottom left hand corner, let's add our value of H bar, 8.943. Meters. And as we stated at the start, we would always expect the value of h bar to be slightly larger than the value for y bar, and we can see that that's the case from our calculations. Let's clear some space and then we can calculate turning moments about different points on this submerged surface. So, first of all, we're going to calculate the turning moment that the fluid causes about the centre line or the centroid of our square surface. Now recall that a turning moment is just a force times a distance. So if we're calculating the turning moment about the centre line, we know the force acts at the centre of pressure or at a distance h bar from the free surface, and our centroid is at a distance y bar from the free surface. Therefore the force is going to act about this small distance here on our diagram. That will give us the turning moment about our center line. I'm going to call that D subscript one. And that distance can be calculated by simply doing H bar minus Y bar. So D one is H bar minus Y bar. So we have 8.943 minus 8.75 which comes out to be 0 0.193 meters. Now we also have our value for our thrust force. And we can work in kilonewtons, so long as we remember that our turning moment will then be in kilonewton meters. So we have 1773.0 times 0 0.193 equals 342.2 kilonewton meters. Let's do a different calculation. Let's find out the turning moment about the bottom edge. So if our submerged surface was only fixed at the bottom edge, 
then this is the turning moment that would be trying to overturn our submerged surface. So once again, the turning moment is force times distance, and this time I'm going to call it distance subscript 2. Now the distance d subscript 2 is going to be the distance from the bottom of the submerged surface to the centre of pressure. Because it's the centre of pressure where our thrust force acts. So using the free surface as a datum, we can see that d2 is the distance from the free surface to the bottom of the submerged surface minus h bar minus this distance here. Well, the distance from the free surface to the bottom of our submerged surface is just h plus d. We can see that over on the left hand side. h plus d would get us to the bottom of the submerged surface. Therefore, d2 is h plus d minus h bar. So we have 6.5 plus 4.5 minus 8.943, giving us a value of d2 equal to 2.057 meters. Therefore, the turning moment about the bottom edge equals the thrust force 1773.0 kilonewtons times 2.057 meters, giving us 3647.1 kilonewton meters. So over 10 times the turning moment about the centroid. So to summarise, we've determined the turning moment caused by the thrust force about the centroid, and we've calculated the turning moment caused by the thrust force about the bottom surface. In the next video, we're going to repeat all of these steps, except in that video, we're going to be using a circular submerged surface.